Joining me, Camp Fam in studio, Jesse Davis, and from his home in Salem, Oregon, Christian Shorio. Jonathan is still with us, of course, the creator of the podcast, Heavyweight. Thank you all for being here with us. Thank you. <laughs> Jesse, this is fascinating because after the accident, you were advised by lawyers and family not to reach out to Christian. Correct. Why didn't they want you to follow through on what seemed to be your desire here? Um, they didn't. They don't want to, me to interact for just legality reasons. The idea of who is at fault was still at question. Um, that stickiness of Lady Justice sometimes gets in the way of us having real human experience. It's interesting. So because I, you know they're telling you not to for reasons to protect you, right? Legally. Yeah. But there's something calling this meeting. Something inside of you. It was an accident. Um, but what did you? What did you want from Christian or want from that meeting? Um, meeting Christian was important for many reasons. He, uh, he and I interacted in a very intense, hurtful way, but I wanted to show Christian that he deserves love too, that my life changed for the better. Hmm. And although it is a lot of pain that I experienced, especially then. Um, I like who I am now more than who I was before. Wow. Christian, let me bring you in. Um, hearing you when you talk about once you learned that Jesse had survived, that you cried relief. Um, after that, incident or the accident, your life took a turn of its own. You've described it as a downward spiral. What happened? What were you experiencing? Well, yeah, it, it was a downward spiral. Um, you know, after the accident, uh, I was still in shock. I went into a de deep depression and uh, uh, for the longest time, um, things just continued to get worse. I, I turned to drinking I dropped out of college. I had a business at the time, and I stopped doing that as well. I pretty much lost all motivation, and uh, that lasted for a good year. Um, I was suffering from lots of panic attacks. I'd be driving, and I, I couldn't no longer uh, drive, so I'd have to pull over on the side of the road, and I would just ha be having panic attacks. Mm. Uh, then uh, almost on a nightly basis, I would be... Uh, I would go to sleep and within about five or 10 minutes, I would have night terrors and mm. I would wake up and I just couldn't sleep. And this went on for quite some time. Did you feel did you, this, this overwhelming guilt that you felt? Was it something that, did you want to meet him to say, I'm sorry? I mean, I know Jesse sought this out, but had you thought about it in your own mind? Like, I wish I could see him. I wish I could tell this guy that I'm sorry. You know, I would have loved to have done that. And I think if, you know, how our society is today, if we could change things and get rid of lawyers and all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, both of us could have had that meeting a lot sooner. And it mm -hmm. probably would have done a lot of good. Jonathan, let me bring you back in because it seems like so often people want the opportunity to talk it out, but they're always barriers in the middle. It's family members who say, don't talk to them again. Right. Or in this case, lawyers who say, you guys don't need to talk for legal reasons. That people want to have the space to forgive, but there's always something in the middle that keeps them from doing yeah. that. Yeah, there was th no no one was encouraging of their meeting. Uh, wow. Like like um, Jesse was saying, the um, legal system, the insurance companies, the criminal system. There's nothing in place to allow two people that experience the most, you know, intense moment for different reasons, mm. um, moments of their lives, uh, to come together to actually share that. Um, yeah. Christian, I know you initially avoided Jonathan's phone call when his team reached out to you. you it took you eight months to respond. Why mm -hmm. did you take, why did you need that time to decide? Uh, so where I was in my life at that time, uh, when Jonathan started reaching out to me, uh, you know, I, I spent the past three years recovering, three or four years. And, you know, it, it was such a very hurtful time in my life that, 
I had started preparing who I was. I was seeing counselors. I'd started going back to school. You know, things were starting to look up. So then Jonathan, he he got a hold of me. He sent me an email. And, you know, I, I was just really afraid of what that would do to me to wow. have that uh, come back up again. So this you know, might this meeting, although it was meant to heal, could trigger you back into the pain that you've been experiencing and the guilt. It is fascinating. And when we come back, Jonathan facilitated the meeting between Jesse and Christian three and a half years after the bike accident. We're going to find out what happened when they had this reunion and more conversations of forgiveness. What are you willing to forgive? Would you forgive someone who nearly cost you your life after the break? Welcome back. So today we've been talking about the power of forgiveness. And my guests today say that learning to forgive helped them heal and ultimately find peace in their lives. And they're sharing their stories because let's face it, everybody in this audience right now, you've had that moment where you have to say, do I forgive you or do I move on? And many of you watching right now. And we've been talking with Jonathan Goldstein, the writer, producer, and creator of this very, very popular podcast. It's called Heavyweight, where Jonathan helps people resolve an issue from their past so that they're able to move on, move forward with their lives. Joining me also is Jesse Davis and Christian Schroyer, two men who were featured in an episode of Heavyweight. Jesse reached out to Jonathan hoping he could help him connect with Christian, the driver who hit him in a near-fatal bike accident that left him in a coma for 17 days. And they wanted to meet. They actually had the opportunity, finally, to do that. Um, I'm curious, Jesse, what was the night like before you were able to meet Christian? Uh, butterflies. Honestly, yeah. more butterflies than the night before the show. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I was afraid before I met Christian, of how to communicate that not only was I looking to forgive, but I also was looking to apologize. What did you want to specifically forgive him for? Um, for changing my life so dramatically. And at the time it happened, it was on all levels something that was negative. Mm -hmm. Lost organs, bone shattered, chronic pain today sitting next to you. And so I needed to show Christian that that was okay, mm. that I had moved past that resentment, mm. that the... Because you resented him. I mean, as I said, a lot of this was legal, and I don't want to get into all that because we're at the yeah. point of peace, but you needed... You had to get past resentment, too, all of these things. And it was resentment for what happened, right? Mm. Where I do believe that there is some part of this that was my fault. Yeah. And... Christian and I were strangers yeah. before, and we were strangers the night before. Yeah. And the idea of bringing Christian like into my family was sort of what I ultimately yeah. was looking to do, was not just forgive, but apologize. Because you're linked together for life now. Yeah. Yeah, you're linked together. Christian, what was it like the night before for you? Because you delayed meeting and taking Jonathan's calls, and now you it's, it's go time, right? It's the night before. And you're going to need time. it. It's go time. How did you feel? Uh, you, you know, for me, I felt quite terrified at the time. Mm. Like, I, I didn't know where this was going to go. I didn't know where uh, this was, what this was going to bring it up. It was uh, very haunt. This whole experience was very haunting to me. And when that moment when came, when you were face to face, what did that feel like? What was that? I know that you sat in silence for some time. You were staring at each other. As I understand, what was that like for you? Uh, yeah, you know, again, I, I was very terrified at the time, but you no. Know, what were you afraid of? Because you knew he'd met, you know, the plan was to forgive, so you knew you weren't going to be ambushed, hopefully, because Jonathan does a great show. So you know that, that it's the, the intentions are pure and good, but what was the fear there? You know, I, I, I really wish that the, I really hope that the tensions were pure. And, you know, when I, when I got into the room and I started looking at Jesse and, you know, I could just see his warmth and his love of like radiating, radiating off of him, like, you know, that, that started to evaporate. It's a very powerful mm -hmm. feeling. And when the meeting was done, you know, as I said, the quote from T.D. Jakes about it feels like a cancer coursing through you and eating away at different aspects of your life. Once you finally had this ultimate moment, where you look at each other and you resolve this, what was that? Does it, does it, the show's called Heavyweight. Did it feel like a weight it lifted? 
It did. It really did. Um, at the end of the meeting, we sat there and we hugged. And then I remember walking out of the out of the hotel because that's where we met, and I just felt like I was a new man. Like wow. I felt like all this relief was just off of me. And Jesse, you know, you, I know you're in chronic pain now. You still don't ride bikes for reasons that we talked about in the break. It's fear. It's where to have him hug the body that was broken mm. in that accident yeah. and that is still mending. How did that hug feel? Um, it felt like the opposite, right? It mm. felt like a closure. Um, our bodies didn't touch in that accident, but our bodies touched, you know? Yeah. And it was so violent and out of control. Neither of us got any control there, right? There's no decision. But so to take the control of hugging and being loving with that exchange, it was closure to something horrific. Wow. Yeah. I've got goosebumps. You know, Jonathan, I take work home with me a lot. I think about our guests. I think about the reactions from Tam Fam and the audience. I, I can't imagine you don't take this work home with you. And, and how do you give yourself a hug? Because it's a lot. I'm sitting here squeezing myself. I mean, it's a lot because it's so personal. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it, but it, it, it was like when I felt very protective of both of them um, and I wanted to make sure that at, at first it, 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 it was a leap of faith for me to understand where Jesse was coming from. And it was uh, and I was slow to come to it, to, to understand how someone would want the things that Jesse wants. And he won me over. And my experience of the whole thing was a learning one. Mm -hmm. I realize through the experience that there's a different way to be in life wow. and uh and jesse and um and and, and uh, christian modeled that wow. and uh it was it was just a beautiful thing to to witness wow well thank you all for sharing the story christian thank you jesse thank you jonathan congratulations on this incredible journey of sharing these stories. And you can listen to episodes of Heavyweight only on Spotify. Thank you so much.